Hey, I am three plus key, your favorite social worker. Welcome back. I'm here to encourage you to pursue the smile by prioritizing the Lord, your physical health and education. Today we are with TPK kids. We're going to read the tale of Peter Rabbit by Beatrix Potter. This book came from the Imagination Library. You can go online and register for free books with the Imagination Library. Did you know that? The Tale of Peter Rabbit by Beatrix Potter. Hmm, we have somebody checking on a little bunny in bed. I wonder what that's about. Once upon a time, there were four little rabbits, and their names were Flopsy, Mopsy, Cottontail, and Peter. They lived with their mother in a sandbank underneath the root of a very big fir tree. You see, they came in from under here, Flopsy, Mopsy, Cottontail, and Peter, and this is mother. Now, my dears, said old Mrs. Rabbit one morning, you may go into the fields or down the lane, but don't go into Mr. McGregor's garden. Your father had an accident there. He was put in a pie by Mrs. McGregor. Oh, my goodness. So it is not the place for little rabbits to be. Little rabbits do not want to end up in Mrs. McGregor's pie. Now run along and don't get into mischief. I am going out. Then old Mrs. Rabbit took a basket and her umbrella and went through the wood to the baker's. She bought a loaf of brown bread and five currant buns. Look, she's getting them ready. And now she's got her basket to go on a store run. Flopsy, Mopsy, and Cottontail, who were good little bunnies, went down the lane to gather blackberries. Look at them. And they've got the blackbird right here, Flopsy, Mopsy, and Cottontail doing exactly what they said they would do. But where is Peter? But Peter, who was very naughty, ran straight away to Mr. McGregor's garden and squeezed under the gate. Look at him. He's just popping right through. First, he ate some lettuces and some French beans, and then he ate some radishes. Peter, look at him. He's eating his carrots right there. That's not where he's supposed to be. And then, feeling rather sick, he went to look for some parsley. Oh, he's filling out under here. It's because he's eating all the vegetables. But round the end of a cucumber frame, whom should he meet but Mr. McGregor? Mr. McGregor was on his hands and knees planting out young cabbages, but he jumped up and ran after Peter, waving a rake and calling out, Stop! Thief! Uh-oh. Look at Mr. McGregor. And now he's chasing Peter. I can't believe it. I wonder if he's going to catch Peter. What do you think? Peter was most dreadfully frightened. He rushed all over the garden, for he had forgotten the way back to the gate. He lost one of his shoes among the cabbages, and the other shoe amongst the potatoes. Oh, there's his shoe. Do you see it? Now what? What's he going to do without his shoes? After losing them, he ran on four legs and went faster, so that I think he might have got away altogether if he had not unfortunately run into a gooseberry net and got caught by the large buttons on his jacket. 
It was a blue jacket with brass buttons, quite new. Oh my gosh. So he lost his shoes, messed up his new blue jacket, got caught in a net, tearing up his buttons. I wonder what mother is going to say about all of this. Peter gave himself up for lost and shed big tears, but his sobs were overheard by some friendly sparrows who flew to him in great excitement and implored him to exert himself. That's very kind. When a friend is sad, you want to comfort them. Mr. McGregor came up with a sieve, which he intended to pop upon the top of Peter, but Peter wriggled out just in time, leaving his jacket behind him. Oh, no. So now he has no shoes, and no jacket. Now what, Peter? <laughs> I can't believe it. And rushed into the tool shed and jumped into a can. It would have been a beautiful thing to hide in if it had not had so much water in it. Mr. McGregor was quite sure that Peter was somewhere in the tool shed, perhaps hidden underneath the flower pot. He began to turn them over carefully, looking under each. Presently, Peter sees Kerchoo! <laughs> Mr. McGregor was after him in no time. This is where Peter started out. This is him popping his head out. Oh, his ears are showing. And Mr. McGregor is getting really close. I think Mr. McGregor is fed up with Peter's shenanigans. And tried to put his foot upon Peter, who jumped out of a window, upsetting three plants. The window was too small for Mr. McGregor, and he was tired of running after Peter. He went back to his work. Well, if he went back to his work, hopefully Peter learned his lesson and he doesn't return. Why would Peter return after all that chaos and turmoil he caused? Peter sat down to rest. He was out of breath and trembling with fright, and he had not the least idea which way to go. Also, he was very damp with sitting in that can. After a time, he began to wander about, going lippity, lippity, not very fast, and looking all round. What is Peter up to? What do you think? Do you think Peter should just go home? He found a door in a wall, but it was locked, and there was no room for a fat little rabbit to squeeze underneath. An old mouse was running in and out over the stone door step, carrying peas and beans to her family in the wood. Peter asked her the way to the gate, but she had such a large pea in her mouth that she could not answer. She only shook her head at him. Peter began to cry. What do you think? Is he frustrated? Is he sad? How does Peter feel right now? Then he tried to find his way straight across the garden, but he became more and more puzzled. Presently, he came to a pond where Mr. McGregor filled his water cans. A white cat was staring at some goldfish. She sat very still, but now and then the tip of her tail twitched as if it were alive. Peter thought it best to go away without speaking to her. He had heard about cats from his cousin, Little Benjamin Bunny. Look at the cat. <coughs> Excuse me. He went back toward the tool shed, but suddenly, quite close to him, he heard the noise of a hoe. Scritch, scratch, scratch, scritch. Peter scuttered underneath the bushes, but presently, as nothing happened, he came out and climbed upon a wheelbarrow and peeped over. The first thing he saw was Mr. McGregor hoeing onions. His back was turned toward Peter, 
and beyond him was the gate. Peter got down very quietly off the wheelbarrow and started running as fast as he could go along a straight walk behind some black currant bushes. Do you think he's going to be able to scurry past Mr. McGregor? Mr. McGregor caught sight of him at the corner, but Peter did not care. He slipped underneath the gate and was safe at last in the wood outside the garden. He came in with all these clothes and he's leaving with nothing. Squeezed in and now he's squeezing out. Peter. Mr. McGregor hung up the little jacket and the shoes for a scarecrow to frighten the blackbirds. You can see right here. The blackbirds, his jacket, the shoes. Peter never stopped running or looked behind him till he got his home to the big fir tree. He was so tired that he flopped down upon the nice soft sand on the floor of the rabbit hole and shut his eyes. His mother was busy cooking. She wondered what he had done with his clothes. It was the second little jacket and a pair of shoes that Peter had lost in a fortnight. Oh my gosh. I knew mother was going to be a little frustrated. Have you ever lost your clothing items? What did your mother say about it? I am sorry to say that Peter was not very well during the evening. His mother put him to bed and made some chamomile tea and she gave a dose of it to Peter. One tablespoonful to be taken at bedtime. Oh, look. And there's Flopsy, Mopsy, and Cottontail watching Mother make her chamomile tea. But Flopsy, Mopsy, and Cottontail had bread and milk and blackberries for supper. Yum! Bread and milk and blackberries. It's a feast. Wow, that's the end of this book. And that now explains the first picture. Remember where mother was taking care of Peter in his bed and we were wondering what happened. Again, this is the tale of Peter Rabbit by Beatrix Potter. It is based on the original and authorized edition. And we got this from the imagination library i am three plus key your favorite social worker and i hope you pursue the smile today if you would enjoy this book for yourself go ahead and email me at three plus key at gmail.com email me your address and i will send it over to you in a jiffy Continue to pursue the smile. Subscribe to this channel for more content. Like this video if you love it. What do you think about Peter Rabbit? And what kind of vegetables do you like to eat? Silly Peter, I'll talk to you later. <laughs>